Let's take a look here at questions 31 through 35 from the June 2016 Chem Regions exam. 31, which notations represent hydrogen isotopes? Of course, you need to know what the definition for an isotope is. Same number of protons, different number of neutrons. And then, of course, you have to realize that the mass number is at the top of the symbol and the atomic number at the bottom. All hydrogen, so the atomic number is always 1, so it's the mass number at the top that should be different. But it actually has to be for the correct representation of a hydrogen isotope, which would either be a mass number 1, 2, or 3. And sure enough, what fits the bill here is number 1. So it's really a definition and a fact. All right, 32. Here we go. Atomic mass. Atomic mass determination is what we're going to call a weighted average. You're dealing with the masses of the different isotopes of an element, and you have to take into account the percentages. So what I did is I came up with this equation. So it's the atomic mass, for example, for gallium-69 as 68.93, then the percentage that it's shown in nature, which is 60.11 divided by 100. And I'm going to add to that for gallium uh, 72, 70.92. And the percentage, of course, is 39.89 over 100. Now, you can play the matching game here. The only difference is that the 60.11 divided by 100 is 0 0.6011 times the 68.93. And, of course, the 78.92, it's 0.3989. So what they did with the answer was they got rid of the percent and just divided the percents by 100. You could also just calculate each answer and match it to the equation. Whatever you think works best for you works for me. But I like working with uh, an equation because it's the same each time. All right, let's go to 33. So obviously, let me go backwards. 32 is definitely a skill, and you can definitely maybe hear our dog Redford, who I like to refer to as Rutherford in the background. Let's take a look at the periodic table to check out the nonmetals. Now, what you need to do here is, of course, remember it's your semi-metals. There are six you need to know for New York State, four that are on the staircase, as I call it, and the two right below. And anything to the left of that staircase whoops, are metals, and anything to the right, of course, are our non-metals. So, what you're asked is, what represents the non-metals? So all you're doing here is finding them based on location, location, location. And, for example, choice one has aluminum in it, it's a metal. Choice two right away has li uh, lithium metal. Choice three, you have your semis, for example, silicon right away, it's a semi-metal. Finally, it's choice four. So you got phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, and you got some growling from a dachshund behind me. And anyway, so choice four is the answer. I would say that's just facts to apply to the reference table. All right, 34. You have a formula XSO4, symbol X could represent the element. Well, of course, sulfate is what we call a polyatomic ion, and it has a charge. And you don't have to memorize it, you just, of course, have to know where to look. And it's the polyatomic ion table, which is reference table E. And here is sulfate. And you'll notice sulfate has a charge of 2 minus, or minus 2. If I go back then, if I have sulfate with a minus 2 charge, whatever is bonded with it has to be plus 2. Because when I add them up, it's a compound, it has to equal 0. So, can't be aluminum. Aluminum, of course, if I look at the reference table and get rid of... 
get rid of all the stuff from the other question. That's plus 3 charge, so it's not aluminum. Cross that one out. Argon, of course, is a noble gas, right? It's here. That doesn't want to bond with anything. Magnesium. Well, that's going to be our answer versus sodium, because magnesium has two electrons it'll give away, hence the plus two. Sodium only has one valence electron, and that's a plus one. So, of course, the answer was choice three. So I'm going to call this a skill for 34. And then finally for 35, the chemical formula for lead 4 oxide. This is a skill. Let me erase everything here so you can see this. All right, so lead 4 oxide. So lead, of course, is PB. The Roman numeral does not tell me the number of times lead is in the formula. Students do that all the time. It gives me the charge for lead as a plus 4. Oxide means we're dealing with oxygen. And what about the charge for oxygen? Well, oxygen's a minus 2. Well, how do I know that? Well, oxygen has six valence electrons. It wants two more. The simple, of course, way to know is you go to the periodic table, you find oxygen, and there it is. You can use your oxidation states or numbers here for also charges when you have elements as ions. So it's kind of an easy way to do it. So lead wants to give away four. Oxygen only wants to, to gain two each atom. You have to balance it out. And probably what your teacher told you to do is to crisscross the numbers. So PB2O4. But here's the thing. We're not done. And this doesn't match any of the choices. And the reason for that is we're going to go ahead and we're going to divide by 2 and simplify this to PbO2. And there is my answer, choice 1. So there's a few steps here, and that's why I call it a skill. Practice it if you didn't get it right the first time. There are a couple of tricky questions here, including 32 and 35. Keep working hard, and good luck.